Hello, I'm Dr. Ola Kammerdiner. Welcome to Discrete Event Simulation. This is Lecture 24, Entity Transfer, Conveyors. I will discuss today things about conveyors and also talk about non-accumulating and accumulating conveyors. So, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss conveyors in more detail than what we did last time in the previous lecture. We just talked about conveyors in general and we mentioned two types of conveyors and we're going to change our model to incorporate conveyors. So we're going to replace transporters with a conveyor and we will have a loop conveyor to follow main paths clockwise. We also will have six entrance and exit points. And we will um, also incorporate loading and unloading times. And each load and unload will take a um, quarter minute. Each part is four feet per side, but we want six feet of conveyor space for clearance on corners. So we're going to assume that the speed of the conveyor is 20 feet per minute. So it's very important again, as I mentioned earlier, when we discuss transporters is to pay attention to the units. Because not only we'll have to enter it in the conveyor um, data module, but also in terms of the distances in the conveyor, and that's um, going to be entered through the segment module. So here you can see um, the plot, right, or drawing, uh, schematic drawing of the um, machines in cell 1, cell 2, cell 4, and also 2 in cell so three, as well as the conveyor, including the distances between different segments of this conveyor. So let's discuss some conveyor concepts. So the entity to be conveyed must wait for space. And conveyor typically consists of cells they're all equal size and constantly moving, so we can think about it as a narrow escalator. And entities might in require multiple contiguous cells. So we must define cell size, and there is a trade-off involved. If we have small cells, then we have an accurate model, but a slow execution for it. If we have large cells, it's just the opposite. We'll have... Um, just approximate model, but running much faster. Entities access space, convey, and then exit. And conveyor has a series of linear segments. And there, each segment starts and ends at a specific station. So it links to form a loop and have some diverge points and converge points. So let's again discuss two different types of conveyors. So we talked about accumulating and non-accumulating conveyors. They both travel in a single irreversible direction. Non-accumulating conveyors can be thought of as belt, bucket line, or escalator. In these kind of circumstances, the spaces between entities on non-accumulating conveyor does not change. So that's very important to remember. And this is why it's called non-accumulating, because the spacing doesn't change. And so entire conveyor will stop for entity access if loading or unloading time is more than zero. So if, for example, an unloading time is zero, then the conveyor doesn't need to stop for exit. But if loading time is more than zero, then this conveyor still stops for access. 
And so this is also very important to remember. This is distinguishes non-accumulating conveyor from accumulating conveyor. That non-accumulating conveyor must stop for entity access and exit. The entire conveyor will stop. For accumulating conveyors, and um, the, these kind of things are different. And examples of accumulating conveyors are rollers or freeways. So if you think about the freeway, then you understand that the accumulating conveyor never stops moving. And if entity on it stops to exit, other entities behind it are blocked and bunch up. Entities ahead of it keep moving. So it's very different, right, from the non-accumulating conveyor, where there was not a distinction between the entities ahead and entities behind, and the, whether they were ahead or behind, they also will stop. But here, only the entities behind, right, if entity um, on it stops to exit, only entities behind are going to be blocked and bunch up. And when blockage ends, blocked entities go on, but may not uh, go on all at once, right? So we need to respect the spacing requirement. So the entities will only start moving when, when they have enough space to um, continue on moving. So what we're going to do is we're going to change model 8.1 into model 8.4. And so as you remember, we're still working with a small manufacturing system, but now rather than um, the resource constraint, uh, constraint transfers or trans, uh, transporters, we're now going to be using non-accumulating conveyors. So again, we'll start with model 8.1 and modify it. And in model 8.1, we had resource constraint transfer. So we'll define new variables, load time and unload time, each with initial value of 0 0.25. And again, if we, we didn't really do much of um, animations there in 8.1, but if you did do that, you would need to delete all route path. Then we're going to define conveyor where conveyor data module that is found in the advanced transfer panel. And there, the name of the conveyor will be loop conveyor. Uh, we also have a segment name, which is named loop conveyor.segment. And the type of the conveyor we're going to select is non accumulating. Um, velocity will be 20 feet. Uh, we'll have units as per minute, right? Which again is important. The cell size will be 3 feet. And the maximum cells number of uh, maximum number of cells occupied is going to be two, which gives us the two cells per entity. Um, so let's go ahead. Let me go ahead and show you how to do that in Arena. So here in Arena, I have my model A01 uh, from the book open, and now I'm gonna go ahead and save it in in a different way. So I'm gonna save it under the name model 8.4 from the book. So now that I renamed it, the next thing that I'm going to do, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to go to basic process, find my variable data module, and here I'm going to change it to unload time. So I had the transfer time before. I'm going to change it to load time and unload time. So I don't need the transfer time anymore. I'll have load time. Double click here on initial value. My load time is going to be now 0 0.25, of course, in minutes. And then in a similar way, I'm going to add variable called unload time. So I'm just going to rename it here to save some time. And so when I do that, then my initial value, right, so see as soon as I renamed it, it works fine. And my initial value, just to illustrate, is also 0 0.25. And that works because both of my load and load times, I wanted them to be 
0 0.25. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the advanced uh, transfer and that's where I'm going to introduce my um, conveyor. So remember previously we used the transporter data module so in this lecture we're using conveyor and specifically for this model we're using non um, non-accumulating conveyor such as belt right or escalator so we're gonna go here and rename this loop conveyor and so when I do that you can also see that my segment name is now gonna be renamed as well and so you can see this is gonna be loop uh, conveyor dot segment I want to change my time from a default accumulating to non-accumulating. And then my velocity for the conveyor is going to be 20. The units will be left as per minute. The cell size is going to be 3 feet. Uh, maximum cells occupied is going to be 2 per entity. I'll keep the initial status as, as we have by default is active and I'm going to be collecting the statistics for my loop conveyor. So now that I got that, the next thing to do is uh, also take care of the segments, right? So we'll do that. Um, but for now, let's also review a few uh, other things in terms of our leave, right? So remember before in model 8.1, what we used here is for every leaf, we use the resource. So now we're going to change this. So instead of resource uh, that we used here, right, we're going to be using a different, and also we'll introduce a delay. So, of course, right, um, I could introduce here a, an expression to use here for leaf. If I'm leaving, right, I'm getting on to conveyor, so I um, will need the load time. So this is going to be my variable, current value. And variables are, of course, found under basic process variables. Then, right, variable, then current value. And then under var variable name here on the right, I need to scroll down to the load time because to start the sequence, right, or to use the leave, I will need to uh, lo load on the conveyor. So I'll use the loading, uh, this delay for loading load time. Change my units very importantly to minutes. And then in terms of logic, or as I mentioned earlier, right, we're using a resource here, so the transfer out a seize resource, right? So that was for model 8.1. So we need to change that to be able to use a conveyor, so I'm going to change my transfer to access conveyor. And so my conveyor name is going to be, of course, loop conveyor. So I'm scrolling down to loop conveyor. And then in terms of number of cells, right, each um, entity will take two cells. And of course here, in terms of connect type, if it was shown as a route with the station time by sequence, Instead of a route, now I need to use convey because that's the type to use with a conveyor. And then again, will be by sequence. So this is okay. And I'll do that for the rest of them. So let me double click here on the next leaf. And that's route for from cell one. Again, build expression under basic process variables. I have a variable, current value, and then on the right, I have my load time to get on conveyor and then transfer out is going to be access conveyor. Conveyor name is going to be loop conveyor. Number of cells is going to be two. Instead of the route, I'm going to do convey. And then um, very importantly, right, almost forgot, changing here for the load time, I need to have my units as minutes. So now the next thing is for the rest of them, do the same thing. So again, not to forget here, change the units to minutes. Um, go ahead and build the expression for my load time. So under basic process variable, I have variable and then current value and then load time to get on conveyor. 
So the transfer route is now access conveyor, and the conveyor name is going to be loop conveyor. Number of cells is going to be two. Instead of uh, route as a connect type, now I have connect, sorry, convey as a connect type, and then OK here. Then for route from cells three, we do the same changes. So I'm going to build the expression, find the variable in the basic process variables, then current value, then load time, then say OK, and then change transfer out to access conveyor. Um, conveyor name is going to be loop conveyor, number of cells is going to be 2. Again, forgot my units, but that's very important, so I'm going to change it from hours to minutes. Connect type is going to be convey, again by sequence, so this is good as well. And the next one, I'm going to again, right, to begin with, going to change my units to minutes, then do the delay as the building, through the building expression under basic process variables, I have my variable, and then current value, and then um, drop to load time, select load time, go here, change transfer out to access conveyor, and then conveyor name to loop conveyor, number of cells, of course, to two, connect type change to convey, and this works. And so now I took care of all of the leave modules. So of course, for the leave modules, I also have my enter. So now to, to do the enter, I have this, uh, this is when I, right, so when I enter a station, I'm actually need to exit the conveyor. So I'm going to change this, right? So I'm leaving this parts and change. I'm going to change the delay logic because as I exit the conveyor, I need to unload. So there's unload and delay. So under basic process variables, as you remember, we introduced a variable. So we go variable current value. And that variable was representing unload time. So I'm selecting variable name unload time and do OK. So now I have that. I need to importantly change my units to minutes. And then transfer in, in model 8.1 was releasing the resource. Well, here we are not releasing the resource, but we need to exit the conveyor. So that's what we're going to select. And then under conveyor name, I'm going to select loop conveyor. If I forgot to do that, that would not be correct, of course. So then I say OK, and I do the same for the rest four stations, which are cell two station, cell three, right, cell four station, and exit system station, right? I don't do that for the order of release because the stations that I just named before, right, are actually the leave modules, or oh, sorry, enter modules, right? So I have enter, enter module, enter module. This is not an enter module, this is still gonna stay as a station. So now I'm gonna go to cell, to station which is my enter mod model sorry module and then change my delay time by building the expression so again under basic process variables I select variable and then current value and then find the unload time because what I'm doing is I'm unloading from the conveyor change the units to minutes change transfer in as exit conveyor and the conveyor name as loop conveyor and then I do OK here. So I took care of cell 2 now. And as for the cell 3 station enter module, I'll leave this unchanged. I'm going to go ahead, right away, change the units to minutes, change the transfer in to exit conveyor and conveyor name to loop conveyor. And then for the delay, remember to build the expression, go under basic process variables then variable current value, and there we select unload time again. So I do unload, then OK, and then do for some of the other ones, right? So I did cell 3, now cell 4. Let's reduce the build expression, and then under variable and current value, we're going to select Unload time, do OK here, change to minutes, then change transfer in to exit conveyor, and then our conveyor name is loop conveyor. So that's 
done. And last but not least, Exit System Station, um, which is another Enter module on the last one. So the above things we'll keep, but this one we're going to change. We're going to build the expression to indicate the delay as on load time. So it's under basic process variables, variable current value, and then for the variable name, I select on load time. And then say OK. Here, change to minutes. And then do exit conveyor and conveyor name loop conveyor. Do OK. So now, you know, I got this part done. So the next thing, as I mentioned, is going to be segment. So at this point, right, if we have loop conveyor segment, our beginning station is going to be order release, right? That's where everything is going to start. And then the next stations are going to be as indicated on the drawing. So let's go ahead and review. Uh, let's also save this model for now and review the rest of the model. So again, we're back here. So as you remember, we just changed the leave modules. We selected delay as load time was unit minutes, transfer out as access conveyor, conveyor name was loop conveyor was the number of cells too and connect type convey. We also modified our enter modules and there we had delays using a variable on load time was units minutes and transfer in was exiting conveyor and the conveyor name again loop conveyor. So now as I mentioned it's important to define conveyor segments. So we're going to define one way length in feet of segments so this as you notice is very different from what we did in transporters and in the free pass transporters, we used uh, distances, right? So we used distances there. And then if we had a guided transporter, we would use network. And so here for conveyors, we're actually using segment data module. And that's when we define the conveyor right away, it also created this conveyor segments segment as I showed. So now we need to populate the conveyor segments. Um, so the segment data module, as I uh, showed you earlier, is found in advanced transfer panel. So the name for our um, segment is loop conveyor dot segment. Our beginning station, as I already showed you, is order release. And at this point, we had zero uh, entries in the next stations, but if you click on the next stations button, then we can start adding up the next stations. So in there, right, we'll have the next uh, names of next stations in the correct sequence, and we'll give distance and correct units, right, for, um, and which, which in this case is feet, of course, for uh, the next station. So in terms of the segments, right, there is also a way to animate um, the segments. And so in order to do that, you would need to put the station markers in front of each resource picture and then use a segment button, right? So if you looked at some of the animation that is done for model 8.1, there the route button is used. And the route button has letter R here, right? And also is red as far as I um, know, but for the segment button, you can see, right, we actually have the letter S here, right, also different color. Um, so you can see here, right, that you could click on this button to connect two different station markers. And that's, like, of course, right, is found in animate transfer toolbar, as, as you, as I already showed you when we did the routes in one of the earlier, much earlier lectures where we, I talked about animation. And so again, in a similar way, like I showed you before, you'd have dialog, uh, use crosshairs, clicking just like distances for transporters, except here, you'd have to place only six segment animations, right? So this is uh, much less um, than what we had for transporters where we had quite many distances, right? So, um, so now let me go ahead and show you uh, what we're going to use 
to do the segments. So here you can see for segments, we're going to be using um, this information from, from the um, plot right of our um, small manufacturing system with the four cells. So you can see that from order release, right, the next movement is going to be to to cell one because as you recall i mentioned that we're going to be moving in the clockwise fashion and so clockwise from order release right so um as you remember conveyors are moving in in the specified um in a specified direction right all the time so here it's going to be our conveyor is moving clockwise right so clockwise from order release the next station is a cell one and you can see there's 24 feet to cell one and then after cell one there's cell two and there's 39 feet so let me let me do that in arena so here in arena i'm gonna from order release i'm gonna be adding next station so i'm gonna click on this next stations button which now shows zero rows and so this dialog saying next stations pop up where I have two columns, next station and length. So as I mentioned, after order release, which are beginning stations, the next station is cell one. So I'm gonna click on cell one. Then after that is gonna be cell two. And for cell one, as you saw in that um, drawing that represented our a small manufacturing system, the lens from order release to cell one is 24. Then from the cell one, the next is cell two, and between those, right, to cell two from the previous, which is cell one, the lens is, of course, 39. And so let's recall what other cells and how, what, how much of the lens we have, right? So after cell two, we can clearly see the exit system, right? And from cell two to exit system, we have 21 feet. And so next we're gonna have exit system and 21 feet as a length. And then after that, we're gonna have cells three and 24 feet. And then after that, cell four and 39 feet. So let me go ahead and do that. So just as I showed you, right, after cell two, we have exit system right clockwise and the lens from cell two to exit system is 21 so i'm going to change this to 21 and after exit system we have cell three <clears throat> and the lens is 24 from exit system to cell three and then after that we have of course cell four and then again, from cell three to cell four, we have distance of 39. And so let's see what else we see there. So what we see is after cell four, we go back to order release, which is the beginning station, right? So the loop came to the end, right? Our loop is gonna end with whatever station started was. So the next is order release, and that's 21 feet. So here, I'm going to add order release, of course, which is the end of my loop. And it's going to be 21 between cell 4 and order release in feet, of course. And so now you can see, right, what we got is the six rows of next stations that go through different stations and ending back looping back into order release so now that we got that we can actually run our model so let me save this for now and then run the model and to um, make sure there's we have the fastest run i'm gonna check whether i selected batch run with no animation so you can see run run control and batch run is already selected here so i'm good to go uh, so i'm going to click on that and this will run my model for me and so you can see right if i had any any kind of problems with my model it would generate an error 
But here it ran my uh, model to completion and I can see the results. So I'm going to say yes. And this is where I'll be able to actually see the report for my model. So here in my model 8, when I click, I actually see that I only have entity queue and resource statistics. So what happens here is that I did not select the statistics for conveyors in my project setup. So I'm going to close off this um, report, my category review report. And I'm going to my model. So I'm going to stop the simulation here. And after that, I can do the changes. So I'm going to click on run and then set up. And um, in the project parameters part, I can choose to collect statistics for conveyors, right? Right now, the statistic collection is only collected for entities, resources, and queues. I also want to know information for conveyors. And let me go ahead and change this to model 8.4. And this is going to be the small manufacturing system was conveyors. And it, they will be non-accumulating conveyor. Actually, just a single conveyor. So let's put it as non-accumulating conveyor. And then I do OK. So now when I run this model again, I will be able to observe the statistics on my conveyor. So now I click on this again, and here right away I see conveyor, right, in addition to entity queue and resource. So when I click on conveyor, I can observe usage, and here specifically under usage I have blocked and utilization. So blocked is, you know, how much of the time, right, percentage of the time uh, that conveyor, right, that con the space on the conveyor is is blocked right and then utilization right is is uh how much of the space is utilized right how much of the conveyor space is utilized um so again right these are important statistics so what we did is we selected run setup project parameters um and there we were able to check conveyor statistics and again, we got percent of time blocked, right, or stopped, right? So when, as you remember, for non-accumulating conveyors, the entire conveyor must be stopped when the entities exit or um, get on the conveyor, right, or enter the conveyor. So this percent of time blocked or stopped, right, is, is um, recorded, right, and that information is important right it tells us of you know how much of the time the entities can really move on the, on the conveyor and then utilization statistic is an average percent of space occupied on the conveyor right and that's important to notice right here for the block it's a percent of time but for the utilization statistic it's not a percent of time utilization statistic for conveyor is actually um, the percent of space, average percent of space. And that's different from resources, right? In terms of resources, when we talked about utilization, we talked about the time. And the same with the transporter as well, we talk about the time. But conveyors, you know, this is where we restrict the space. The space in the conveyor is restricted. So utilization reflects that difference that we have for conveyor. And also to see conveyor stop, right, because it's non-accumulating more clearly, we could change the load time and unload time to some greater values than um, quarter minute. 
We also could do this during the run using uh, Visual Basic, right, or VBA. And if you want to learn more of that, you can uh, read more in Chapter 10 of the Arena textbook. Or we can also do that, uh, and by what I mean by doing that is changing load and load time, is using run controller. And again, there's more information about it in the Arena textbook. Uh, so again, even though we can do that, it makes output statistics nearly impossible to interpret. So this kind of things is, are discouraged. And so now that we talked about non-accumulating conveyors, uh, let us also briefly talk about accumulating conveyors. And so you know there is quite a difference between accumulating conveyors. And if you think about an example, that would be, for example, a freeway, right? So there, uh, one of the important things is that we're not going to have this uh, same kind of thing where the whole conveyor stopped, right? So for non-accumulating, the whole conveyor stopped for loading and unloading. Here, for example, if the um, entity is exiting the conveyor, then only the entities, it will only affect entities behind and not ahead of it. Right, so the entities behind is gonna bunch up, they're gonna stop, but not the entities ahead. And so the position right on the conveyor is gonna change um, or can change through time for the accumulating conveyor. So again, in the conveyor module, we're gonna change conveyor type to accumulating. We're gonna ch uh, have accumulation length of four feet and that's the uh, that's the amount of space accumulated parts need on conveyor. And uh, we can run this and see very little accumulation in animation if we actually did the animation. So if we needed to see more, right, we can increase load and unload time, as I mentioned earlier. So let me go ahead and quickly change model 8.4 to model 8.5. So here we're back in the arena. Uh, so this is my um, category review for my model 8.4. So what I'm gonna do for now is just close my um, category review, stop the simulation run. So I click on end here button, or I can do alternative click here, run and then end and so the next thing is I want to save in case I didn't save it I want to save my model 8.4 and then rename it as model 8.5 and that is the model that's going to have the accumulated conveyor so the first thing I'm going to do is going to run setup and just view, do a few changes here in terms of renaming to have an accumulating conveyor and so I'm going to say OK. So now it's model 8.5 uh, except it's the same as model 8.4. So what I need to do is go to advanced transfer. If you don't uh, if you don't remember how to get the template to attach, if you don't happen to have the advanced transfer, um, just to remind you is this button here, right, allows you to ten to attach any template, including advanced transfer.tpo, which gives us this advanced, nice advanced transfer panel. And so here, currently our conveyor is the same as it was in model 8.4, which means it's non-accumulating. What we're gonna do is change it back to accumulating, right? And so now it added, you notice, right, when I change from non-accumulating, just to demonstrate again, to accumulating, we added it added an extra column. So this column is accumulation length. So accumulation length is going to be four, right? So this is this is my accumulation length because the it will be accumulating. This conveyor is going to be accumulating conveyor, and this is again in feet, right? Because those are our units. So the rest of the things remain the same. Right, because nowhere else we really use this information. So again, if we, if I run it through, right, my model runs fine, and I could see the results. 
And so here, right, under the model, I could also see the conveyor. And here I have the usage. So notice now we don't have the blocked. So the question is why? Yes, of course, it's a different type of conveyor. This is an accumulated conveyor. So before we had uh, blocked, which gave us the time, as a percentage of time, um, the conveyor was stopped to let the entity uh, either enter or exit. So now instead we're going to have lens accumulated. So when I click on lens accumulated, you can see, right, this is an average value for the accumulated lens. So again, the accumulation happens because of, right, the, um, right, because when it exits the conveyor, right, it's, it's gonna have to, you know, the entities behind is gonna bunch up or accumulate. And again, utilization. So utilization again means what utilization means here is that it's a space, right? It's a percentage of space that is being used on the conveyor. So you notice we have some differences for our loop conveyor. And in addition, the, the half width is now um, not enough. We didn't have enough to create non-correlated estim estimates for half width. So it says correlated here. So compare right this to model 8.4 which which the only difference with this model is that there we use non-accumulating conveyor and here we're using accumulating conveyor. Uh, so so this is what I wanted to show you in terms of the model 8.5. So I'm gonna for now just close this report and stop my simulation run. And I also want to talk very briefly regarding uh, and go back to transporters and talk very briefly about another type of transporter. So just as I said, I wanted to talk to you more about a different type of transporter. So as you remember, uh, when we construct model A2, we built um, this model using transporters. And there, the type of transporters we talked about was a free transporter. Uh, which means it used distances and in that type of transporter we don't have, right, there is no um, limitations on a number of of entities going through the specific um, link, right, or the specific distance, right, so if you have some station uh, order release and then cell one, for example, then we could have how are many entities going through, right? It's not going to um, affect the, the speed of the transporter in any way. Um, so with the guided transporters, it's a little different because now we're going to have um, a capacity for the link, which before we didn't have the capacity of the links. So again, it's in the transporter module, and that's a data module in advanced transfer panel. So there we can, um, so we're going to do some modification, quick modification to model A2. So there's still the name card, but we're going to change the transport time to guide it. And what's going to happen is you'll see the network name called uh, card.network of space accumulated parts, right? Need, uh, well, uh, not really the space of accumulated cards, but it's going to be the representing the distances and also representing the um, how many right how many different um, entities right or transporters we can go get through the specific link and in terms of network data module we'll have card.network as an entry and then we'll have network link um, there as well and we'll have a velocity change factor that will allow us to speed up or slow down a transporter or individual on an individual link in the network. So let me go ahead and demonstrate this real quickly. So here I am um, in Arena. This is my model A2 where I actually have a transporter. So you can see transporter under advanced transfer and the name of its card, right? And that was a free pass type of transporter. 
So I'm going to leave this as it is. I'm going to save this model as um, a2 bonus. So in terms of the bonus, right, what I wanted to show you is that if I change the type of transporter to guided, so now, right, right there, before when I had it as a free path, I had distance set, right, and I had car dot distance. Now this has changed when I select guided. It's changed to network name. And and so we have this card dot network, right, also has specific initial position, right, we could have acceleration and deceleration in terms of speeding up or slowing down on this uh, for this transporter. And we'll have a distance, right? So the distance now is not really useful, right? It's not really used by this specific transporter because the transporter is guided. Instead of whatever we had in terms of the distance, we now would need to rebuild as a network link. But notice between the differences between the distance, right, where we had stations and then we just had the beginning ending station in the distance. It's quite different in terms of the network because here we have network and then for each network we have network link. And so again, right, you could just redo the card network, right, and then have the network links very similar right in terms of okay network link right that would be network link for example from uh, uh, order release to cell one or so on right and so and then adding additional network links so i'm just added this um, default network link one just to illustrate what's going to happen right so now it's going to have one row and then here i also now have a network link and it's I can select what kind of link it is, whether it goes in both directions or in a single direction, right? Also, there is a spur, but much less often used. So unidirectional is only a single direction. This is bidirectional, right? So unidirectional, if you have a different type of distance, so it still says, right? So we have the intersection names, and uh, this is a little bit different from from what we had before where we had the, the stations right so again we have beginning direction and direction number of zones and then velocity changing factor so we could do right we could do a lot in terms of being able to to modify the velocity change right in terms of um right naming this, but more importantly, this network is gonna allow us, right, to model the um, that the transporter is guided, and so there is a limitation in terms of how many we have from uh, going through the link. So this uh, pretty much completes this lecture. Please go ahead and uh, read the uh, textbook because this is quite advanced so this talks about conveyors and transporters so please do review it it will be covered in the exam